In sport, as in life, many are accorded labels of greatness for their outstanding achievements on the field of play. In this day and age, it seems as if they come and go with an ever-increasing frequency. But there are those whose exploits are reserved for the history books, whose achievements vault them above and beyond greatness onto a pedestal reserved only for legends. Arnold Palmer's ability to carve out a round of golf with the skill of a surgeon has placed him side by side with the most legendary players the game has ever known. As a youth growing up in the small western Pennsylvania town of Latrobe, Arnold learned the game from his father. He found early success as a young amateur. My first high school golf match, I was, uh, I was uh, 13 years old and I, uh, I shot 71, which was three over par on a par 68 golf course and uh, I felt pretty good about that. It was fun for me. I, I, was, uh, I had some success early and that inspired me to work harder uh, at the game. A defining moment in Arnold Palmer's life came at the age of 24 when he won the 1954 United States Golf Association Championship in Detroit, Michigan. And of course that was sort of a turning point for me uh, uh, in golf to win the amateur, to have the confidence that I needed to uh, turn professional. So uh, shortly after that, I uh, turned pro and uh, started my professional career. Shortly after winning the USGA championship, Arnold met and fell in love with an attractive 20-year-old woman named Winifred Walzer. Winnie was smitten with her handsome golfer, but her parents were less than enthusiastic about a penniless would-be golf pro for a son-in-law. So the young couple eloped five days before Christmas and have continued their love affair to this very day. In the spring of 1958, Arnold paid a visit to Augusta and left with the first of his four Masters titles. It was at Augusta that an army was born. The story behind it probably is the fact that at Augusta, the scoreboards were all manned by soldiers in those times from, from Fort Gordon. And uh, uh, they put up signs, go Arnie, go, on the scoreboards, on the sideboards. And uh, so one of the writers, the sports editor of the Augusta paper, as a matter of fact, uh, started talking about Arnie's army and it was picked up and it's been carried on ever since. It's the largest unofficial army in the world, I think. In the years that followed, Arnold proved that his faith in his abilities to play were well placed. As his list of wins grew, so did the size of the crowds who came to see him play. But it was more than just raw talent that recruited people into his army. When asked about the secret to his adoring fans, he quipped, maybe it's because I'm in the rough so much that I get to know all of them personally. Gary Player once said that if Arnold Palmer asked the gallery to go jump in the river, they'd do it. Whether that was true or not, his impact on golf as a spectator sport was undeniable. His charm, his wit, his humble beginnings, and his belief in honesty and hard work endeared him to those who played the game vicariously through him. When Arnie won, they were winners too. My first goals were, after I had won national amateur, was to win a golf tournament. And, uh, and I was a short-tempered guy. I had, uh, like a lot of young people, I, my temper uh, maybe cost me uh, a, a better start than I had the first year. As we made that Northwest swing and back to uh, Toronto, Canada, in August of 1955, uh, where I was playing very well, and uh, thought that I had, I was disappointed that I hadn't won a golf tournament up to that point, and was very fortunate to have everything come together in the Canadian Open, and I won that. And as I have lived through my professional career, have found that uh, winning that golf tournament, and particularly that one, the, the Canadian Open, has meant a great deal to me uh, uh, through the years. And you say, well, majors, uh, the Masters, the US Open, the PGA, the British Open are important. But uh, I'm not sure that uh, had I won any one of them uh, as a first tournament, it would have meant any more to me than having won the Canadian Open. To date, Arnold Palmer's tournament victories total 92 and counting. The competitive fires burn as brightly today as they did years ago, as a young boy stepped up to the number one tee at the Latrobe Country Club and Parr was his opponent. 
Today, Arnold stands at the head of his own multi-million dollar corporation, yet he devotes a good part of his time helping charitable organizations such as the March of Dimes and the Arnold Palmer Hospital for Children and Women in Orlando. When asked about heroes, he mentions names like Charles Lindbergh, Dwight Eisenhower, and John Wayne. But whenever golf and hero are mentioned in the same sentence, you can be sure the name of Arnold Palmer will be in there too.